Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouched. Last time we did most of the moons in Tost Arena, there's just a few to go, uh, and we basically have to go to other kingdoms to get them. So we've made our way on to Lake Lamode. Apparently we didn't do the story here last time, which is interesting because I remember doing the story here last time. Because I decided it was too easy. Uh, this time we will be doing the story because that's part of everything we have to do here. And we'll be getting all the moons we can, basically. So, let's go grab some purple coins, make our way over to do the story, and go from there. Uh, I think we might go to the story moon first, just for simplicity's sake. Again, it's hilariously easy to do, you just gotta do that. Uh, watch out for these Goombas. Uh, we're gonna go through this painting here. My rubber band actually just came off, so I'll just fix that. I was in water anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. Uh, since crouching doesn't happen in water. Uh, there we go, rubber band in place. There we go. Problem solved. Okay, so yeah, this is the Sand Kingdom we're in again. We're just gonna hit this flag here, and we're gonna grab this moon. And while we're here, it turns out the moon that I forgot about, I remembered. <laughs> so the moon I forgot is the one that I mentioned a couple of videos ago that you get for looking at the returned binding band. So we're going to go over there and look at it now while we're here in Tostarina, and then we're going to head back to Lake Lamode and continue on our quest. Um, whether this painting actually leads to Lake Lamode or somewhere else can change, depending on the order you do the kingdoms in. Uh, I believe the first one you go to from Lake and Wooded will go to Tost Arena, and the other one goes to Luncheon, I think. Um, Volbono, Mount Volbono. I think that's how it works. Uh, anyway, what we have to do basically is just go down the hole in the desert again. So we're just going to head over that way. I bet you're expecting this video to have a lot more Lake Lamode in it. <laughs> it will, don't worry. This will just this take a minute or two. We could get there faster with a warp, but I think it's fun to just travel our way over there. Movement in this game is a lot of fun, even if it's been restricted by sticking a rubber band on your controller. <laughs> so yeah, we just want to drop back down this hole over here to get back to the boss arena. Basically what happens is, if you finish the story in the post-game, then certain things don't reload properly in the same visit to that kingdom until you've hit the moon rock. See, there's a bunch of, like, characters here dancing around with the with the binding band, checking it out. Uh, these are supposed to show up as soon as you finish the game, but if you do the story of the area in the, in the post-game, it won't happen until you leave the kingdom and come back. Or hit the moon rock, either way. Anyway, all you gotta do here is just do that and get the moon out of the binding band. Thankfully, like, ground pounding doesn't break it, otherwise we'd have a problem. <laughs> okay, so those two moons, we're just gonna make our way back to Lake Lamode now and continue on our quest. Both of those moons, very easy, not any problem at all. You just have to be able to reach the other painting, and the other painting is quite easy to reach. As we saw, you don't have to do the story, but we're going to do the story, we'll be doing that next. Uh, warping back to Lake Lamode is our first step. Here we are, Lake Lamode. So yeah, we just hop out of the water there. Back into crouching mode. Uh, some more stuff shows up around various places once we've done the story. Um, but we'll do that first, just to get out of the way. You're right, Cappy, they don't. Uh, we can actually enter this area, so I might just do that next. 
Uh, the timing is fiddly, though. <sighs> Gotta be really precise. I keep messing it up! <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, there we go. Okay, so here there's one of these note things, but it's pretty easy because the platform's moving and you need to stay with it anyway. I did just miss a note there, so I've screwed it up, but... You get the idea, you just pick up all these notes. And hopefully not land on the other pipe and have to do it again. <sighs> Alright, we do have to come back up here anyway, later on, so I might just wait till then. Uh, this... this lady here is presumably sad because, yeah, the Brutals are up there. They stole the dress. Uh, the dress itself, interestingly enough, like I said with, um, the binding band that we just looked at, the lock, the, um, I think it's just called the lock lady dress, it won't respawn when we do the story, but we can get the moon out of it, even though it hasn't respawned. It's an interesting quirk of the way the game works. Uh, whereas the Binding Band, you could not get that moon, because you couldn't ground pound on it. The dress, because there's... Uh, we'll just do the, we'll just do the battle. We'll, we can, I can show you after we've done the battle. So yeah, it's a fight against Rango here, who is of course the easiest brutal. Unless you count, uh, I guess Spewit might be the easiest. It's one of those two. They're both very easy to fight. Also, Rango is argu arguably harder in this setup than he normally would be, so... Since I can't throw my hat at him very easily. Because he's coming in a straight line instead of boomeranging, it's actually harder, which is interesting. Boop. This fight is supposed to be very easy, but it is a bit harder than his other fights, which is hilarious. Yeah, you just pop him on the head like that, and then he'll go back to the next phase of the battle. There we go. See, that, that's much easier to hit in our current setup than the one where it comes straight at you. See? Whereas the first one, which was obviously supposed to be the easiest, was much harder to hit. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, he just takes three hits. He's very easy. I took a couple of hits, but, you know, I wasn't really trying too hard to avoid taking hits. I could have avoided them. <laughs> and that gives us a multi-moon. Let me fix this rubber band while the cutscene goes on. It's kind of twisted up. And I don't like that. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine speedrunners normally skip this because there's a bunch of cutscenes and stuff involved in the multi-moons. Yeah! Unless they're doing like an, an all-moons run or something, in which case you would need to not skip it. Uh, there's a... Okay, so now we've done the quest. You can see it's not quite as dark here anymore. Uh, if you look up at the sky, you can see it's like, it's daytime now instead. Uh, and those stairs are back, so we can actually climb up that way instead of having to do a fancy cappy bounce. Um, we can still do the fancy copy bounce, and we probably will in a moment, but yeah, there's a hint art here, which we'll be doing. Uh, as you can see, that, that's clearly the Cascade Kingdom, so we'll have to go back there in order to do that one. Um, but we're just getting some more moons now, so I think if we manage to capture this, these binoculars, there's something up here we can look at, maybe? I always think there's something to look at, and I don't think there is here either. Um, maybe once we've actually done the next bit, I don't know. Um, there are a lot of moons underwater here, which is a little frustrating because you can't crouch underwater. So it's just normal gameplay. Possibly with some accidental ground pounds, messing everything up. You know, usual sort of thing. But that's one, that one gives you an enormous amount of time. I messed it up a whole bunch and it still worked without any trouble, so... Yeah, that's easy. Uh, your air meter in this game is very, very short compared to some of the other Mario 3D titles. Like, 
Like, um, in Galaxy, you could swim underwater for quite a bit longer, for example. That, I think that's by design, because you're supposed to capture a cheap cheap if you want to stay underwater for a long time. Uh, collecting a moon or a heart or lots of things will actually refill your air meter as well, so you can avoid needing a cheap cheap in that way. You can also avoid needing a cheap cheap by using assist mode in which you don't actually need to breathe, which is kind of weird. Uh, did I already get those ones? Nope. So yeah, there's a couple more purple coins up here. Uh, there's a cat Mario there for some reason. I don't know why all these things aren't actually in this game or in this game as pixel art. It's it's weird. <laughs> Oops. So yeah, you can actually just go up here now, which makes it a bit easier to get up. It wasn't that hard to begin with though. So it's not really that different. Uh Lakitu's here now, which is why Cappy was talking about a fishing pond. Because you can fish here to get another moon. And you can see, just like the one in um, Tost Arena, there's not a lot of room to move your Lakitu around. So you can't really do a whole lot except catch the fish that you need to catch. Oops. Uh, it's kind of slow and a bit annoying. Wait for it to come back, there we go. Bite it already. I don't have all day. It's supposed to be a short video. <laughs> there we go. Yeah! That's all you need this Lakitu for. There's not anything else to catch. So it's kind of boring compared to some of the others. Uh, is the timer challenge here? Did I already do that? No. So yeah, basically what you've got to do is just make your way over. If I just dive down like this, it should be pretty easy, because swimming physics are just normal. Oops, nope, I didn't quite manage to do it right. Also, I'm doing accidental crouching again. I don't know if I positioned the rubber band wrong or something. Maybe. Ah, it happened again! Oh no! Uh, you don't actually take any damage immediately when your air runs out, so yeah, something is wrong here. Hang on. I think th I think my rubber band's just slipped a bit too much, and it's not pressing the button down as well as it was. Oops. Ah, uh, pressed home by accident. That might actually be a problem. Let me just see. Swim up, swim up, swim up, swim up, swim up, swim up, swim up. Swim up, swim up. So you just take damage after a while. Yeah, that's not actually pressing the button. This is a bit of a quirk with the way the game handles the controls. If you go to the home menu, it forgets that you're holding the button until you repress it. I don't know why, it's very strange. Uh, but yeah, basically all you gotta do here to do it fast enough. Uh, we can probably do some backflips to do it. Yeah, that'll work. Da, 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 da. Yeah! See, it's not that hard. Uh, and that'll heal us back up, that one hit we took. Uh, yeah, you can't see your aim meter for a little while after getting a moon. Most of the hard vanishes temporarily, which is a little frustrating, but because it fills your air, it's not a big deal. There's a moon in here, too. Ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, and there's a moon shard around here somewhere. I don't think we did that yet. There's one of the moon shards. So yeah, just like norm just like any other moon shard thing, there's just five shards just scattered around the area that you have to gather. Pretty simple. Uh, one over there. And they're in bubbles, so they fill your air back up. So if you don't want to get a cheap cheap, you don't have to get a cheap cheap in a lot of cases. Uh, over here, behind these these uh, crates, there's another one of the moon shards. I believe. Yes. Uh, this is a bit scary-ish, because they've got these um, deadly seaweed monsters here. 
I don't know. A bit weird. <laughs> uh, easy peasy, there we go. Uh, we head into the city if we want. It's over here. And now we're on land again, therefore we're waddling. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we went down there yet. At the bottom of this well, there's a, there's um a moon or two you can get. Uh, there's also one in here, which is really cheesy. It's actually a little bit creepy when you come in here. Look at this. Look at this dialogue. Ba -da -ba. Yeah. I mean, wh why would you want to keep this room our little secret? That's just... It just has some unfortunate implications, I think. Probably nothing that Nintendo had in mind when they wrote the dialogue for the room, but, you know. Uh, some coins you can get up here if you want, wanted a bunch of coins. That's an option. To, to just grab them up there. Uh, talk to is over here if you want to... Ask them where all the moons are. That's an option. There's exactly one seed you can plant in this kingdom, and you plant it here. Yes, Cappy. You could plant one of the seeds that has a moon in it. Uh, there's a cat peach over there. If you want an extra heart, you can get a cat peach. Uh, over here, that's not the dress. That's just the stand it goes on. But if we get in there, we can still get the dress, even though it's not there. Like, we can get the moon out of it because the stand is still there, and I guess the stand is the object that actually has the flag in it that lets you get the moon out? I don't know. It's weird. Um, but yeah, basically, we don't... The, like, the Lock Lady dress isn't actually in its spot, but if we go in there, which we can do by changing outfits, which is why I'm gathering some purple coins, I think I already have enough, but I always want to make sure we have enough. By messing up and falling down here again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you've got to buy the swimwear from this kingdom's purple coin shop. And then you're allowed to go into where the dress is. Or where the dress is supposed to be, but actually isn't, because the game is a little weird. There we go. Uh, I think that's probably enough. Uh, but I won't do that just yet. I'm going to just keep swimming up for now. So if you come over to this side... That's where, the, where the, um, the shop is. You can go in there and buy the swimwear, and we will shortly. We want to keep this outfit on for a second, though, because there's something we can do with it. If we just bring ourselves up here, to the top level. We can hop up on here. Oh, okay, they're not here yet. Okay, um, later on, there will be some luck ladies here that want to see certain outfits. Uh, which is why three of the outfits are required, and one of them is this one. And basically, you wear the outfit, the little plate goes, wow, so fashionable, you get a moon. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I forget which room this is. I know we did some of the challenge rooms the first time we were here. I don't know if we did this one. Look, it looks to be open, so maybe we did, or maybe that's just because Cappy hit it a second ago. Okay, there's still some stuff to do here. Oh, right, the purple coins. Okay, yeah, we got we got both moons in here, I now remember. But there are some purple coins in this room as well, so we should go get them. Uh, they're not very far into this room, so it's not a huge deal to have to redo the little bit that's necessary. Basically, you just have to twirl over here, slide down this wall, make your way around the back here, and there's just three purple coins. And that's all there is to get in this room. Uh, we can't warp while hanging off a wall. That's annoying. I thought we could. Uh, we just have to get onto a solid ground and we'll be able to warp again. And just warp ourselves out of here. Rather than redo everything. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I forgot how much stuff there is in this, this challenge room. Uh, there we go. We just have to walk, 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 walk. And just drop down here. There we go. Now we can warp. Uh, let's just... Oh, that's pointing at where the moon rock is, right? Not our location, which is over here. <laughs> it's like, we're not over there. <laughs> this is this is silly. Okay, so we're making good progress. Um, we don't actually need this outfit just yet, so I'm going to go buy the uh, swimwear and put it on so that we can go get the moon for this kingdom. So yeah, the swimwear, here it is. 
Basically, Cappy becomes some goggles instead of a hat, which is very weird. Uh, and Mario gets to wear a floaty ring, but it's just decorative, it doesn't do anything. Because all of the outfits are decorative, except that some people want to see them. Because that's how it works. <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, there we are. We've got some swimwear now. Uh, Cappy's eyes pop up in front of Mario's eyes when you let the eyes appear, and it looks kind of weird. Um, she's meant to be a hat rather than goggles, basically. Uh, you just talk to this lock lady here, and it will open... I mean, sorry, she will open up this door, and you can head on through to get to the other side, over here, where the dress should be. So yeah, there's supposed to be a dress on this stand, but you can still throw Cappy there. Cappy! And get the moon out. Even though the dress isn't there yet. Yeah! So, it's just an interesting quirk of the way the game works, I suppose. Um... There are a few others, other moons that you get by interacting with the treasure once you've rescued it, but I think this one and the binding band are basically the only ones that work this exact way, I guess. And my rubber band came off again. Fortunately, we're swimming, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm just gonna get us back inside and put it back on. See, as you can see, I'm not crouching. <sighs> God damn it. I might need to get a fresh rubber band. This one might be getting worn out from too much crouching. There we go, that's better. Okay, uh, I don't remember if I got this one already, but if you ground pound on this pillar... Yeah, there's a moon hidden in there. Uh, it's one of those super secret ones that Cappy comments on when you get it. See? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh. I think that zipper up there just contains some purple coins, but we do want to find some purple coins, so... Let's give it an unzip. Oh no, that's a challenge room. Uh, I think this is actually... Yeah, this is the this is this one, which we've already done. Yeah, see, Cappy's eyes just appear on top of Mario's eyes. It looks weird. <laughs> okay, so that's been done too. Uh, let's see. Um, what have we done here? We still need some more moon shards in this area. If I can remember where they are, it would be good. Uh, I might actually capture a cheap cheap to simplify this a little bit. You don't strictly need them here. There's a couple of places where you're forced to get one in order to um, go down far enough in, in deep water, but this isn't one of those places. Oh yeah, there's the other one, Shard. So yeah, they're, they're pretty easy to locate, and I'm just not smart. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the cheap, cheap swimming controls, it's basically like a submarine. You just swim on a flat axis like this, and you can dive by holding Y, and you can go back up by holding B. Um, compared to Mario's controls, which are more like the 2D games controls, basically you can move around in, in, um, on a flat sort of plane, but Mario, like, drifts down and you tap B to swim up, which is basically how the 2D games worked. So, the cheap chip controls, it's faster and generally easier to use than Mario's controls, but there's nothing wrong with the Mario ones, they're still good. Um, I would not consider them bad controls by any means. I'm, I like them. But up, ba yeah! Um, yeah, we skipped that one earlier because I thought it was a bit too easy. Uh, but now we have it. Uh, there's the seed that we have to take through. This is sort of, like, this is one of the few, like, parts that demand that you do stuff for a while as just Mario, underwater. Uh, it's not super hard because there's lots and lots of bubbles in this tunnel. And you're supposed to come through this tunnel from the other end and not have a cheap cheap anyway, so it is designed to be swimmable as plain Mario without that much difficulty. I believe you can't fast swim when you're carrying a seed or whatever. So, you have to be very careful here. Um, I actually took out some of these bubbles on the way, so I may have some trouble. We'll see how we go. Um... Uh, you actually drop it if it hits an enemy, so... 
Thankfully, you don't drop it if you take damage from drowning. So I'm just going to swim up to the top here. Okay, all good. Uh, so if you're on the surface, you don't actually sink if you're still swimming, but if you stay still, you will slowly drift into the water. Um, which I think is a good set of controls to use, because it feels like a 2D game when you want to swim underwater. You just drift down. But when you're on the surface and you want to swim on the surface, you don't have to put any special effort in. Which I think works well. Uh, you get a little coinies here. There we go. I'm just going to plant this where it goes. Um, in some challenge runs, you need to not plant this, because once you've planted it, you can't get another one. And bouncing off of it can be useful for certain things, especially jumpless runs. We're not doing that, we're doing crouchless, so... I mean, we're doing permanent crouch uncrouchless, I guess. So, we don't really need to use seeds too much, as far as I know. We'll see how we go. I may realise that this is a mistake and end up having problems. Or I might not. Uh, okay, how are we doing? It's possible that the, um... Yeah, it's 18 out of 33. There's still a lot to do. But I'm not sure where they are. Um, I know that there's one... I believe you absolutely need a cheap cheap to do this. Oh, uh, maybe you don't, actually. Hang on, let me just try it without one first. Uh, basically there's this well here. You can dive down to the bottom. And when you get to the bottom, you can get a moon down there. You're supposed to go get a fish and swim down so that you don't have to run out of don't run out of air, but I believe if you just keep ground pounding like I'm doing here, you can make it to the bottom without having any trouble with your oxygen supply. Ooh. Okay, since I have the life up part I should be okay, but I think I'm gonna take at least a point of damage. Yeah, I did take a point of damage. But I'm alright. And yeah, Captain Toad is down here, because, of course. I don't even know how I made it here. If I discovered this power moon here, you can have it. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! Now, you would think Captain Toad would realise that to get back, he could just go through this pipe over here, but he doesn't. He's stuck here forever. Uh, bye, Captain Toad. <laughs> yeah, the pipe just leads you back out of there. Uh, there will be another moon down there later, but we can't get it just yet. Uh, we can go buy a moon. We haven't done that yet, so let's go do that. Uh, Van Bolg's just swimming up here. Swimming to the dim. There we go. Let's uh, head through here. I would like to buy a power moon. Thank you, Lock Lady. Yeah! How are we doing? That's 20 out of 33. Alright. Uh, let's look on top of the plaza. I think there might have it might have unlocked the next part of stuff that you can do up there now. Uh, so that would be worth a look. Oh, also there's there's a puzzle we can do over here, which we should probably go and do. Uh, basically, now that now that this room is openable, we can just head on here. You have to do the story to unlock this one, which is interesting because most of the challenge rooms don't work that way. Basically, this big statue thing is broken. We just have to move this half around until it's fixed. Uh, I usually brute force this puzzle, so. I may take a little while to get to the right position. Basically, you want to be in that orientation. No, no you don't. That's not right. <laughs> uh, basically, you're trying to fit it onto that little slot there, so you need to be positioned correctly so that you can land on the slot. Uh, I tend to take a while. See, it's going to bounce off if you do it like that. Uh, obviously. So that's almost right, but it's actually upside down from the correct orientation. So what you have to do is carefully... Yeah, I usually just brute force this. I don't really have a good strategy for doing this the correct way. 
Uh, that... And yeah, once you get in the right position, which is taking me a while because I don't have any decent way of doing this. There we go, that's the spot. You just lock it in like that, and you get a moon. And there's just one moon in here. It's a puzzly sort of room rather than a platformy challenge, so there isn't much else to do. Yeah! And that's that room done. There isn't much to do in there. Uh, okay, we've bought a moon, we've planted the plants, we've... Let me think here. We got the moon from Dory. Thanks, Dory. Uh, let's go up to the plaza and see if the plaza stuff is there yet. Uh, we might need to reset this area, like we did with, um... Tostarina. I think going through a painting counts for doing that, so we might just go through that painting back to Tostarina and see if that fixes it. Yeah, more purple coins. There are only 50 here, like in um, Fossil Falls, because there isn't that much stuff to get. This kingdom's a lot smaller than Tostarina. Or at least this part of it is. The rest of the Lake Kingdom won't be bigger. Okay, there is something to do over here, so we're gonna do it. Basically, there's a timer challenge here. As you know, timer challenges can be a bit of a problem for our run, but they're not insurmountable, so let's give this one a shot. You just have to climb up this tower thing. This one is actually very easy for our run, as you can see. Uh, you can use this, this um, technique to climb up there, which is the secret path for this kingdom. Uh, I'm not going to try to do that because it's very hard, and I want to do these moons the normal way anyway, just to keep things fair. Um, the painting to go back to Lake Lamode should be somewhere in the late game. Uh, I think the Snow Kingdom, maybe? I'm not sure how it decides which kingdom gets the painting to wear, so it's a little hard to predict. Uh, yeah, okay, those are still up there, so let's just make a bit of a Goomba Tower to help me get up. I believe the only purpose of making a Goomba Tower here... Oh no, there's actually another reason to do it, I just remembered. Uh, you do this to get your... to get that, but also... I'm not sure if she's gonna be there yet. Let's go have a look. Okay, yeah, she's not there yet. Uh, later on, there will be a Goomba over there somewhere, and to get a Goomba over, you pretty much need a tower because they're not waterproof. So you need the help of many Goombas to make your way over there. I'm well, kind of thinking of it, I'm not sure having multiple Goombas helps that much. Hmm. Okay, there's some more purples over here, so let's grab those. I'm not sure how many short we are. Uh, five, I think, so there should be two more somewhere. 43. Okay, we still need seven more. Okay, that's more than I expected. <laughs> um, let's see, we did that zipper already. We did that, those notes already. There's another bird moon, but that's not unlocked yet, so we can't do it. Um, the way you're intended to enter the plaza is by using that zipper um, to unlock that path, but we did it a completely different way, obviously. Haven't actually used that zipper at all yet. Um, it is the easiest way to get to a certain moon that we haven't unlocked yet, but when we get there, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> Um, let me see, let me see. How many moons are we at? 22 out of 33. I feel like we might need to go through the painting to reset the area. See if that makes it, see if it works that way. I'm not sure if it actually does do a reset or not. Uh, I mean, I assume it would have to reload the kingdom when you go to another kingdom and come back, but it depends on exactly how much reloading it needs, I guess. Anyway, here we are in Telstarina. We're just going to hop straight back in the painting. Yeah, it doesn't activate for a few seconds. Probably just to stop you from accidentally going straight back through without meaning to. Kind of like the pipes between areas in the 2D sections. Ooh. Anyway, here we are. 
Black and Lakela mode. Let's have a look around. Uh, we did the painting moon already. Uh, I can't see if the stuff on top of the plaza is reset or not. Let's go have a look. Are you, ma'am, are you looking for a fish? I think she is. Looking for fish, ma'am? Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so some stuff has been updated, but other stuff hasn't, by the looks of things. Also, yeah, you can get all the way up there in one go. That's pretty cool. The way you're intended to get up is to swim around and go through the tunnel, and then open it from there with the piece switch to make it easier to get up again, but... None of that's necessary. This that that platform there is like high enough to make a jump all the way up. So yeah. Uh, okay. So no peaches in here yet. So I'm guessing the area didn't actually reset. It's just that that one moon was already available and I didn't realize. Uh, basically, she just wants to see one of the cheap cheeps, and so you just gotta go find the cheap cheap and bring it to her because she's like a fishy fan or something. Hello, I'm cheap cheap. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I love a power moon. One of my favorite things about this game is that people just give moons to just random animals and stuff, rather than just rather than just them being them being specifically for Mario. There, there's a good reason that you might want to give a power moon to a random fish that you think is cute, which is of course the reason that everyone finds use for power moons, they're not just like for Mario and they're not needed to save the universe theoretically. Like um, the stars in 64 for example, which actually belonged to Peach and were stolen. So it makes no sense for a penguin to have them for example. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, you, you can attack as a fish, but it looks like you can't do it on land, so I can't actually activate that while, while being a fish. Also, when you're a fish for a little bit too long on land, it actually cancels out your fishiness. It just, you just sort of vanish back into being Mario, which is a little annoying. It lasts a decently long time before that happens, though. Uh, yeah, you can just climb up there if you want. Uh, there was a moon up here, but I think I already got it. It was in that crate. Yeah, uh, let's do that, try to do that 2D area again. There's actually some purple coins in there as well, which I think are the last ones we need. They are. So, let's try to do this timing again, and we can see Mario are pretty big in a different outfit, which is cool. The timing is really tight. And it's different for this one. You gotta do it at exactly the right time, it's really important. And I'm clearly having trouble with it. And I think you might need to do it again if you mess up the moon, actually. Ah. Uh, okay, okay. One, two, three. Yeah, the sound effects aren't quite matching up the way I'm expecting them to. Ugh, oh, damn. I think trying to pause buffer there actually messed me up. Okay, um, hmm. <laughs> I got in there earlier. I know it's possible. Come on. <sighs> One, two, three. <sighs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Mario, no. This can be done. I know this can be done. Uh, but I can't do it this time. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, God. Uh, okay, let's see. Is there, are there any other moons I can do right now? I don't think I can, actually, which is kind of weird. Because I'm only at 23 out of 33. Everything should be doable, theoretically. Damn it. I'm pretty sure I'm timing it right. 
Yes! Okay, there we go. Okay, okay, this is gonna be tricky, but if we do it precisely enough, we should be okay. There we are! Okay, so that's the moon. <sighs> yeah! <sighs> and then the platform sneaks off this way, we can follow it to find the last couple of purple coins. 50 out of 50. Okie doke. Uh, there is another moon you can reach from up here. Thank you, Cappy. I think Cappy always says that when you get that particular moon, which is interesting. Uh, where are we at? 24 out of 33. We bought one already. I think I've done most things there are to do. Hmm. I know some of the stuff here... Like, it didn't reset properly because of the timing, so we might need to open the moon rock to do them. Yeah, I know. I did it already. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, the, the dress still isn't there, so it hasn't actually reloaded this kingdom properly. Uh, I don't know if leaving, like, with the Odyssey and coming back might fix it. Mm, maybe. We're at 40 minutes, though, so I think this is probably enough. We got 20 moons. Two of them were actually in Tost Arena, but I think that still counts. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, that hasn't grown yet either. It, it takes a while. Um, I think that's enough for now. I think that's a good video. So that's the, that's us getting going in Lake Mode. We've done most of the moons here, including a 2D moon that I thought was impossible. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it just hasn't reloaded everything in the kingdom yet because of the way we did the story. I don't know, I guess it, I guess it's a bug, but it doesn't really impact much unless you just want to do all the moons in one go, in which case you have some trouble. And you specifically don't want to open the moon rock until you've done all the non-moon rock moons, because opening the moon rock resets everything the way it should be. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, we've gotten a bunch of moons, we've made some good progress. I might go cash these in. Uh, no, I won't, I won't. I'll just stay here for now. Chances are next video I'll be reloading anyway, so I can cash them in then. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed swimming and turning into a fish and being close range cuteness. Uh, I know I love being close range cuteness. It's one of my favorite things. Um, also, yeah, we're just going to do some triple jumps here because bonking against walls lets you do that because this game's mechanics are somewhat hilarious. <laughs> uh, sure does. Um, anyway, end of video. I need to stop rambling at the end of my videos. God. I'll work on that. Bye, friends.